to Meet the Ambassador channel where we meet ambassadors from different nations around the world who are based in Bangkok, Thailand. Today we'll be meeting ambassadors of Spain, His Excellency Emilio de Miguel Galabia. And just to give a little bit of his background before meeting His Excellency, um, he studied at the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, um, studying the law degree. And before coming to Thailand, he was previously based in five different countries, which is the Philippines, Singapore, Bolivia, Cameroon, and Yugoslavia. And he is served in the Spain's embassy in Thailand for three different occasions already, so totaling over 10 years, so His Excellency can speak some Thai. Um, and also, he has his elder, elder son, who is a rapper, in the, now in the U.S., and he has two other children who are studying in Spain right now. So, yeah, let's meet His Excellency. So today we are at the residence of the Ambassadors of Spain, His Excellency Emilio de Miguel Galabia. So let's go meet him. Hello. Hello. So Sadiqa. Sadiqa. This residence, we have been here since uh, 2001, but please Let's go to the social area, which is downstairs. I see. Okay, okay. starting out with gift giving with Ambassador Galabia of Spain. Yes, so you have been to Thailand for 10 years now. Yes. Yeah, in three different posting. Um, so you know how to speak and also read Thai. Yes, I do. Wow, um, but maybe you might find it difficult in, for writing. Yeah, yeah because I, I find you mm -hmm. have uh, many norms. Mm -hmm. So there are words I recognize when mm -hmm. I read them. Yeah. But I'm unable to write them on my own. Yeah, so um, in terms of that, we have a little gift for you to, for you to practice writing oh. Thai. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. We're just um, like, this is our, the, the writing practice um, of all the consonants of Thai language. And also these are the vowels, which is um, there, are, there are 21 vowels in Thai language, so may, yeah, you can practice that. And for just a little bit in, um, for the culture exchange, so, so Thai language has 44 consonants and um, 21 of that is based on sounds. Um, and also the language is created in 1283 AD by Paul um, or King Ram Kamhang. Yeah, so for practice, um, yeah, so we'd like to teach you, or you probably know a little bit how to write um, your name. Yeah, so we would like to start on that. Um, so we would start with um, your name, uh, Emilio. So, oh, you're yeah. starting it already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you don't need the... A, ni, li. Wow, and you uh, write it co correctly. You know how to like, like start with uh, the... Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, it's, it's Mili, right? It's not Salai. Emilio. Oh, Milio. okay. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's not um, Salai, like this one? The, the shorter, the shorter one? No. no. Oh, okay, so it's this uh, well, one. Okay. It, know, it depends to, to on my... how you pronounce. Yeah, yeah and... In Spanish, yeah. we, don't, we don't distinguish between short and long, long. vowels. Ah, okay. So to me, all of them are the same. Oh, okay, so the same. So, so it's, it's okay with Emilio or Emilio? It's yeah. The same. Okay. okay, so yeah, that was pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like we would have to like see, okay, on that. But okay, I think you have to add on like writing as your skill now. Because mm -hmm. you said you find it difficult, but yeah, this is like... 
this is clearly. Um, oh, I can teach you how to write my name then. Oh. Yeah. Um, so you can write my nickname first. It's Pi. Pi. Yeah. Well, I guess. Pi. I would write it this way, Pi. That's Pi. Ah. Pi. Pi. You see, Paul I Pan. have pro. Paul Pan. Paul Pan. Paul Pan. Yep. Bo? Up. Kun. Ah. No, that's that's Paul Pa. Uh -huh. <laughs> Paul Pan is this one. Uh, Paul Pan is uh, this one. Ah. Pi, yeah. You know, one problem also I have mm. is with aspirates. Oh, aspirates. I see, I see. Because we don't have them in Spanish. I see, I see. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Ah. So good. Yeah, because um, as we were saying earlier, like some of the Thai consonants, like saw, 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 you know, it's the same vowels, like the same sound, but yes. the character is different. So it's a bit difficult for you to spell it out. Yeah, like saw and then ta, like ta, ta, yeah. like ta, yeah. Or yeah. paw, paw. Yeah, but this one is paw. Paw, it's like paw. <laughs> you have to press your voice a little bit. Yeah. This is paw pan, paw yeah. pung. Yeah, it's a bit different. Um, yeah, so that's that's all <laughs> for this first session. <laughs> yeah. So next up on gift giving. Um, yeah, this is special since I know that Your Excellency, you are a Buddhist. So we would like to give you this book. Maybe you can try Thank read you. reading it. Sawat sang suk. So, sang suk. so what does it mean? Maybe you can try translating. Building happiness. Building happiness through praying. So these are the praying verse taught in Thai school and you may hear them at the temples. Um, like it, these are the verses that Thai Buddhists know well. So Thailand has the second largest Buddhist population in the world uh, after China with approximately about 64 million followers which is, um, yeah, most of Thai citizens, like over 90% um, of Thai um, citizens is Buddhist in Theravada. Um, so yeah, we can try reading since um, Your Excellency, you know how to read a bit of Thai. We can start with the classic Namotasa verse. Yeah. Namotasa, Pakawato, Arahato, Samam, uh, Samputasa. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> so good. So yeah, so Namotasa verse is, it's called Namasakan Paratanatrai. So it means you salute, it's a salutation to the triple gem of Buddhism, which is um, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, which is the monk. So yeah, before bed, like myself, I just like Namotasa, Pakwato, Alahato, Samma, Samputasa. And next up, this is quite challenging, but I would like to challenge you <laughs> on this. Um, yes, yeah, so it's Bodhgra um, Paratanatrai on praising verses to, to the three gems as well. Maybe you can try reading it. Arahang Samma Samputo Pakawa Putang Pakawantang Apiwa Temi Suaka kato, suakato, yep. suakato, mm -hmm. pakawata, tamma, tammo, tammo, yep. Tamang, nama, namat, sami, mm -hmm. supati ba, subati ba, pan, pan panno, mm -hmm. pakawato, sawa, kasangko, yep. Mm -hmm. Sangkan. Naman me. Clap. Oh wow. <laughs> wow, you're so amazing. Oh my god. I, I didn't expect <laughs> at, at first I thought I, you would recite after me, but wow, this is yeah, so these are all the verses. Um maybe you can take a look later and they have like a translation also in Thai as well, what, what they mean. So yeah. yeah, to enrich your Buddhism um like practice. Um also um yeah, I'm just wondering why you um yeah, why you you become a Buddhist? Well, it or, or was when when did it happen? Yeah, it happened about twenty years ago. Mm. I was looking for something, and I was looking like orientation in life, mm. where which way I would like my life to take. I see. And I started reading books on Buddhism, mm -hmm. 
I see. And one day I met my master. Oh, your master in Spain? In Spain. Ah, I uh, see. She's uh, Spanish. She's from Barcelona. I see. And she was educated in the in the Tibetan uh, tradition. Oh, oh. So, so the the original like like what is yes. it? Yes. I see. So. It's Terawada as no, well? No, it's it uh, Bashrayan. Oh, Bashrayan. I see, yeah. I see. Wow. And then um, what about Buddhism that strikes you or, or yeah, makes you want to convert? Or, or may I ask, are you um, um, Catholic or, or what religion did you well, practice before? Before I yeah. was Catholic. Catholic. When I was born, about 95% uh, of Spanish were Catholic. <laughs> now so I think the figure, uh -huh. maybe it's 70% now. Ah, uh, okay. So I was raised as a Catholic, but you know, at a certain moment in your life, you start making questions. Mm. And I thought that uh, Catholicism was not enough for me. Mm. I was looking for something else, mm. and I found it in Buddhism. I see. What in Buddhism that stands out to you? Like, is it the truths, the facts, or the words of the Buddha, or...? Well... I think first, mm -hmm. it's a way of life, I see, uh, very, I, see. I find it very supportive, I find very it's a logical. way of life mm -hmm. that gives me tranquility, I see. but also when I see the vision of the world presented by the Buddhism, mm. I think it's right. I see. I, I see Buddhism for myself as yes. logic, you know, yeah. I think it's practical for me at least, and yes. it's like pure logic to, to me, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. to me it's similar, and yeah. I'm fascinated how it sees that mm -hmm. everything is interrelated. Yes, yes, for as a community as a whole, and from little individuals to, to big community as a whole. Yes, so yeah, that is all for the gift giving session, and stay tuned, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. doing the game part and today we're playing have you ever game so we asked about cultural questions about Spain and if your excellency you have done it before you can say I have raise up your sign like this but if you haven't done it before you can say I have never so let's start with the first question this is on language have you ever say a foreign language can be Thai language that means one thing but you you meant the another definition I have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What What is the word? Can you remember or the the scenario? Well, um, one scenario I remember. Yeah. That was well. I have one scenario, but it's not to tell in TV. In okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we like to give bits of um, language spoken in Spain. So in Spain, um, of course, Spanish is the official language, but there are also three co-official co languages as well, which is um, Basque, as we said yeah. earlier, and Galicia, Galician, Galician, and also Catalonian. Do Spanish people use this language interchangeably? Or well, uh, they are co-official in their own regions. Mm -hmm. um, the people in those regions mm. who speak them are able to speak Spanish and they can interchange uh, very easily. Ah, but I me, see. for instance, I don't speak neither of the three, the three, but when I listen, I can understand Catalan oh, and Galician. Ah, what the, the basic of it. But Bass is totally different yes. one, I see. Okay, so now is the part that everyone is waiting for. So now we want to test. Your Excellency, yes. Thai, reading Thai. So here are the four phrases of Thai tongue twisters that we like you to read and say it really fast. Oof. So here, okay, so are you ready? The first one is, um, you can read it out loud. Sao Sui, Sai, Sia, Sia Su, Sek, Suam, Son, Son, Son Sung, Si Som. Si Som. Yeah, so if you speak fast, it's like sao so se se si sa song 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 si song. Yeah, so it means um, oh, I think you can translate right. The pretty girl. It's uh, quite difficult. I prefer you to translate okay, it for so me. Okay, so it means um, the pretty girl is wearing sai se si sa. It's wearing a neon shirt. Suom son sung si som. Suom is another word for wear. Yeah. Um, son sung is high heels. Ah. Si som orange. Yeah. So the pretty girl wearing neon shirt and also she's wearing um, a high heels, orange eye high heels. Maybe you can read fast, faster. So, 
Si sat suam son song. Si. Su, si som. <laughs> Almost is yeah. more difficult in, in English. <laughs> yeah, so, so I say si sat suam son song si som. Okay, next up. Um, I can read it out first. Yeah. Tahan bok tu pun bak pun bok tu. So it means. Um, I, this I can know the beginning. Okay. The soldier told his. Uh, He's holding uh, the gun. Yeah. Back. Boom. Back. Ah, at his back, and he's going to say, "Till well, uh, oh, uh, oh, okay. Actually, this word is very tricky. Bok can means like bok, as in like hi, bye, right? Yeah. But it has another meaning. Bok, bok, bone means like you have a cement, right, on on something, and you shave it. On the building, ah, yeah, yeah, bok tuk, yeah. bok tuk. So tuk means building, right? So tahan bok, you you are correct. The soldier um, yes. to pun carry the the gun. Bag yeah. bag means um carry. It, it has another definition. So uh, bag means carry. Pun means um, the cement. Yes. Pai bok tuk to shave the the building. So yeah, tahan bok tu pun bag pun pai bok tuk. Your turn. Taham bok tu pun bak pun pai bok tu. Yes. Good job. We learn about the Thai Thai tongue twisters and all, but we also I also want to learn about Spanish slang. Maybe you can share several ones. Well, uh, mm -hmm. in a word that on one side, if somebody is really a bad person, yeah, you would say he's a cabron. Cabron. Yeah. Cabron. But at the same time. You can use, <laughs> <laughs> but you can use it also with a friend. If ah. a friend does something to you, but in a nice way, you can say, "Qué cabrón." Qué cabrón. Hey, buddy, something like that. So yeah. it means like buddy or no, hey. because it has the two meanings. Ah. It can be like, you. "I, how you are," oh, but also okay. it can mean. How bad is that person? You know, oh, it has the two, be, two, the two meanings. Oh, it's pretty tricky. And then earlier you were telling me about um, joder. joder. Joder is when you are irritated. Joder. With joder. Something, let's say that you are carrying a box with a lot of things, and suddenly the box oh, fails. Fell. Uh -huh. You would say joder. Joder. Okay. And another word that is similar to joder. That you well, uh, another difference is. No jodas. No jodas. No the jodas. root verb is the same, mm -hmm. and in no jodas is when somebody tells you something you didn't expect, or that person tells you mm. some to do something that really you don't want to do. Mm. No jodas. Yes. No jodas. Joder. And ca cabron. 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 So next question is: Have you ever had lunch at 3 p.m. And then dinner at 9 p.m. I, I have. I have. I have. So I hear that uh, my friend who lives in Madrid eats at lunch at 3 p.m. It's normal there. And then she eats a light food, li light dinner at 9, sometimes 10 p.m. Is it usually that case? or? Yeah, this is yeah. normal for many people, but not for me. Ah, I prefer I Asian. Time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Usually for us, it's like you know noon, one p.m. for lunch, like as we are having lunch, and yeah, six yeah, for when, dinner. When I live in Spain, mm -hmm. I used to have lunch at two o'clock, mm. which for the Spanish standards, it's a bit early, mm. and to have dinner, mm. maybe eight o'clock, uh, which for the Spanish standards is also the uh, early. Um. Yeah. So I guess it's like um. Like a cultural base because you know the bars are open at this or cafes are open at this hours. So touching upon the subject of food, maybe we like to share a bit on um, the famous tapas or famous food um, of Spanish. So of course like paella and um, my friend recommend tortilla de patatas. Yes. Yeah, and then um, pimentos de padron. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, and that that is like a hot. Hot tapas. In terms of cold tapas, um, she recommended ensaladilla rusa, yeah. rosa, rosa, which is rusa, rusa, which is like Olivia salad and like uh, melon con jamón serrano. 
Yeah. Yeah, which is like a well, ham on Melon con jamón is not uh, properly a tapa. It's more a mm. dessert. Ah, it's more like a dessert. Yeah, maybe you can share on, on tapa. Well, something very popular are croquetas. Ah, like a croquette, like yes. uh, croquetas. What is inside the croquette? Well, you can do it with a chicken, uh -huh. with ham, with uh -huh. seafood. Ah. There are many variants with cheese. Oh, with cheese as well. And we heard that also churros and chocada yes. is not dessert. No, in this Spain. this is taken more for breakfast or oh, for uh. something we call merienda, which is in the middle of the afternoon. So tea, Around, tea time. Yeah, tea time. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, it's interesting because I heard that, you know chocolate and churros. It's normal here as snacks or yes. or desserts. So next question is, have you ever hear someone tell you that you speak too loud? It happens to me all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So on yeah on the the noise level, what's up with that? Like with the Spanish? Well, uh -huh. this is a good question. I don't know why uh -huh. we use in Spain to speak very loud mm -hmm. and also very fast. Ah, fast as well. In Latin America, I think they speak less loud and less fast. I see. I asked my friend the same questions as well. She's a Spaniard. She said we, they are used to um, loud level of noise because they're comfortable with it. So, yeah. so the neighbor, when you speak already loud, she, she wants to speak louder. And it's yes. like a competition, like speaking. Yeah, <laughs> when you enter into a cafeteria, mm. a bar, but the level of uh, voice is quite high normally. So moving on, um, this is about the product invented um, by the Spanish. So the question is, have you ever used a product invented by Spanish without realizing that the origin is from Spain? I think so. Yeah, recently, yes. when we were doing the research, yes. um, I found out that lollipops Chupa chups. Uh, yes. It's in weather in Spain. Yeah, like, this oh. I knew. <laughs> yeah, you knew previously? Yeah. I see, I see. Is there other inventions that you can think of that have well, in Spain or? I don't know the name in English. Uh. Fregona, you know what's a fregona? No. A fregona is, well, you, ha you know the broom map. for the map. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This okay. is a Spanish. Oh, this is invented by Spanish? Yes. Oh. If Spanish didn't invent this, the world would be so dirty. See? Yes. There's like a good... Um, also, um, we heard that the foosball, the table with little humans... Where ah, you, yes. Yeah, it's yes. invented by, by, by Spanish. So interesting. And also in terms of sports, well, chess is originally from India, but then it's the Spanish that invented the, the modern rules of chess. Oh. How, yes, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so fun fact for yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of like um, uh, variations of Spanish products and also service um, originally created by Spain that we use every day, but we probably don't realize that we're using it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so next up on questions. Um, so the question is, have you ever heard of a misconception or misunderstanding about Spain by foreigners that maybe you like to correct? Hmm. From for me, I have for Thailand, but but not for Spain. Yeah. Yeah, I th I yeah. have for for Spain. I think one misconception that yeah. sometimes I have heard. Yeah. yeah. About siesta. <laughs> I was gonna ask it in the next uh, question. Have you ever taken a siesta? <laughs> yeah. I, I have taken, but with life nowadays, mm -hmm. making siesta is not possible as before. Yeah. So maybe it's possible on Saturday and Sundays, Sundays. but not in weekdays. In weekdays, mm -hmm. normally you go to work, you have a quick holiday. lunch, and you continue working. Mm. Just a quick little background. If anyone don't know what a siesta means, a siesta is a power nap. Literally, it's a nap that people take um, usually about 20 to 30 minutes after yes. lunch. Yeah, so that's a siesta. I wish. Thailand has adopted a siesta, <laughs> but oh, but nowadays the Spanish people siesta yeah. sometimes or yeah, we can do siesta, but more in the weekends because uh. in weekdays you don't have the occasion. I you see. live from from your work, not possible. I see, I see. So you just work out and maybe like siesta in the weekends. Yes. I see, I see. Lastly, the question is: Have you ever watched? Uh, flamenco. 
Yes. I, I have never, actually. Never? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. So I, I watched it on YouTube. I don't count it as watch, but but yeah. Um, is there previous events that there you hosted Mako here or? Yeah, yeah, yeah do, do, do in the, do you know the dance fest, the international dance, dance festival of Bangkok? That yes. It used to take place in September. Last year it didn't uh -huh. take place. So in that festival, I have seen a very good Spanish dancer, Sara Varas. From Menko perform because on Spain you can see all, um, um, on the streets or even like at the um, um, special occasion performance like the National Day, Constitution Day and so on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, flamenco, a tradition is there are the tablaos yeah. where the stages where flamenco is, uh, is played and there would be people there watching, but also suddenly one of them could start singing. Yeah. There is improvisation, but it doesn't happen in all the tablaos, only uh. in some very specific ones for very good aficionados. Ah, oh, I see, I see. And if you had a chance to go to Spain, yeah, please enjoy the flamenco performance. Um, yes, that's it all on the game. Um, yes, thank you so much for watching and thank you, Ambassador Sonunka. Thank you, Sonunka. Welcome back. So now we're with Ambassador Galabia and it's Q&A time. So for Q&A, the questions are selected from a variety of groups like the Thais who have been to Spain, um, expats living in Thailand, and also questions from Facebook and Twitter. So everyone is asked one question. What is one question you like to ask the ambassador of Spain? Um, so this is an expression kind of question. So maybe you can look at that camera and answer this question. What was your first reaction when you first know that you will be based in Thailand? Well, I was very, very happy. <laughs> I had already been posted twice in Thailand before, mm. and it was like the fulfillment of my career. Continue on that. Can you give a bit of your background in your career and your path in becoming an ambassador? I studied law in the Universidad Autónoma of Madrid. And then I passed the exam to become a diplomat mm -hmm. in the year 89. And in 1990, mm -hmm. once a full-fledged diplomat, I was posted first in Cameroon. Then mm -hmm. I went for eight months mm -hmm. to Yugoslavia, which was mm -hmm. at the time in war. Oh, then I, I moved to Bolivia. Mm -hmm. And then in 96, mm -hmm. I came to Thailand for the first time. I see. And I think that I became in love with Thailand and with Asia. Mm -hmm. And since that moment, my life has been very much related uh, mm -hmm. to Asian affairs. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, 2017, I was designated ambassador of Spain in Thailand. Wow, how, how long has that journey been since the first day you, you became a diplomat? How well, many years? 31 years 31 this years. year. Wow, already six countries? I'm yeah. so jealous. And also next question, having li lived in all these countries, what does being Spanish means to you? And how does your career as a diplomat shape the definition of being Spanish? Well, uh, mm. I think when you are a diplomat, you're representing your country, mm. and it makes you much more aware mm. of your identity, mm. of what defines uh, your country. Mm. Something that also you want to perceive how other people perceive your, your country. Mm. And in some cases, you think that you must fight to change uh, stereotypes, uh, prejudices, mm. and it's something I work hard to. Mm. But another nice thing of being diplomat and having lived in other cultures is to discover what we have in common. At the mm. end of the day, mm. all of us, we are human, human beings and we are not so different. And I think that after 30 years of being a diplomat, mm. you learn how to stress about, about the things that unite us. And you also touch a bit on the similarities between the countries. Um, so having been here in Thailand for a decade, what are the similarities of Spanish and Thai people and maybe between the countries? Well, the simili yeah. to me, the main, two main similarities between Spanish and Thai, mm -hmm. first is for us, family is very important. Mm. We feel very much attached to our families. Mm. And the second thing is that, yes, we work, 
but we are aware that getting fans, Sanuk Sanuk, is Sanuk. very important for us. <laughs> Sanuk, yep. <laughs> that not, all, not everything in life is simply working. Mm. And also we give uh, a lot of importance to friendship and personal relations. Mm. And having like the La Fiesta, yes. yeah, all year long, yeah, we have Thais also like that too. And I think also Thai and Spain, we are like Jai Di. Yes. Yeah, we are like kind, um, welcoming. Um, generous. Yes, yes, generous. When I will be back, in, back Spain. In, in Spain, I will miss especially how welcoming Thai people are whenever I go to a shop or to a hotel in the street. Mm. I feel very much welcome and dealt with a lot of sympathy. And next up, um, talking in terms of your career, um, yeah. if you weren't a diplomat, if you're not a diplomat today, what would you like to become? What do you think you would become? It could first, be about like the hobbies you like yes. or, or yeah, whichever. Well, first, the first thing is that being a diplomat has been my life mm -hmm. and I know if I if I hadn't been a diplomat, I think I would be sad by now. <laughs> but okay. uh -huh. if I had, uh, if tomorrow I would leave uh, diplomacy, mm. the things I would like to devote myself are writing and, you know, becoming a monk is something that appeals oh, me. Okay. I was once wow. for one month and a half mm. at a monastery in Nepal and oh. I felt very peaceful, wow. very well. Mm -mm. So if one day mm. my children don't need uh, my money anymore, <laughs> then uh -huh. maybe I can go to a monastery. Uh -huh. Maybe your son becomes like really famous artist, pop <laughs> stars. Yes. And, and he starts financing yeah. me. On that, we like to, we talked a bit earlier in, in um, law and governing the country since you are also accredited to um, Myanmar as well. So our Myanmar right now is now in political unrest. Um, I shall say, um, maybe touch a bit on that. What can Thailand learn from Myanmar on, say, demo say um, establishing democratic structures? Well, uh, to me, democracy yeah. is very important. It's the most, at the end of the day, it's the most stable mm. system. Mm. And for me, democracy, the important thing uh, for democracy to work mm. and to avoid populisms that uh, now we are having problems in many countries about mm. populist leaders mm. is you need a population which, which is very well educated, yes, good I standards agree. of education, mm. freedom of speech, I think it's important, mm. but mm. also quality media. Also on that, maybe you can touch a bit on Spanish history, like what can we learn from Spanish history on democracy? I know that, um, you know, after the dictator, like Francisco Franco, yes. you went through a, a transition phase to democracy and it's actually really peaceful. Yes. Like, yeah, so maybe you can talk. Well, on that. I think it was mm. at the time we, we had some violence problems, we had yes, uh, yeah. terrorists in the Basque, Basque. country, mm. Mm. but I think if the transition worked, mm. was because there was mm. the majority wished for a peaceful transition, mm. the majority wish for democracy. We had a very good uh, political class mm. that mm. they knew how to create consensus. Mm. They knew how to listen the population. Mm. I think mm. that it's uh, something very important for democracy mm. here in Thailand, also in Spain, mm. is to have a very good uh, political class. In mm. that uh, respect, I, see. I read uh, some 10 years ago a book Oh, okay. Do, Please suggest yeah. to our audience, yeah. Do you know Helmut Schmidt? No. He was a German chancellor. Uh, okay. He wrote a book called Out of Service. Out of Service. And he made uh, reflections how politicians should prepare themselves. So mm. he told people shouldn't enter into politics before they are in their 30s. They should have mm. before a previous career either in the public sector or mm. the private sector. I see. So they must be good and they have they must have already skills before they enter into politics. I see. Also, they wanted people who are prepared, ready to work, mm. that don't see politics as a way of living, I see. but as a way of serving your country. I see. I also, see. he told a politician should know 
English and at least another language. I see. So the standards he set for politicians, I think, are the right ones. Mm. And unfortunately, I think in modern democracies, we are not following those standards. Yet, just yet. So, yeah. Um, ha taking the second language, I mean, even at this time, it's like more crucial than ever. Yes. Like, like if not saying taking the third, the fourth, the fifth language. Yeah, yeah. so I think communication is key. And also, yeah. as you mentioned about the book, it's about giving and taking yes. and knowing the community as a whole. So now on economy, so it's your chance to um, speak about the re trade relations between Spain and Thailand. But first of all, I'd like to give the audience a bit of a background on Spain's economy. So Spain economy is Europeans top five largest economy and the world's top 15 as in nominal GDP. Um, so what are the factors that make Spain's in the top ranks and keep growing um, among the EU nations? Well, uh, on one side, mm -hmm. since the very beginning, tourism helped us a lot. Mm. It helped uh, to start our economy mm. in the 60s. I see. Then, uh, in the... Because tourism is your main, like Thailand, it's yes. your main, main GDP sector. Yes. Yeah. Uh, something that with the COVID crisis, I think we oh, will have yeah. to reinvent ourselves. Yes. Yeah. But also in the last years, mm. We have worked a lot in uh, new sectors, mm -hmm. in innovation. Mm -hmm. We have understood uh, the importance of innovation. Mm -hmm. In that respect, I can tell you, mm -hmm. last Monday, I met the Minister of Higher Education, okay. Science and Innovation of Thailand. Okay. And I was glad to see during our mm -hmm. talks mm -hmm. how there is already a lot of cooperation mm -hmm. in you know, science and innovation between Spain and Thailand. Mm -hmm. Some of the sectors mm. are agro-industry, mm. sci uh, life science, mm. also renewable ener oh, energies. I see. And as I tell, in the last year, since mm. the cri crisis of 2008, mm. first, we have stressed a lot uh, the issue of innovation mm. and also internationalization of our companies. We understood that in order to survive, we had to be more international. Spain opened the embassy in um, Bangkok back in 1961, which yes. is 60 years now since, yes. uh, since uh, the embassy's opening. Um, but before that, Spain and Thailand has established 150 years of diplomatic relations. That's a really long time. So next question is on trade. Um, maybe please give uh, a brief overview on trade relations between Spain and Thailand. What are like the main import exports? Yeah. Import. Well, Thailand is our second trade partner in ASEAN. Oh, okay, wow. But at the same time, I must acknowledge that mm. rela trade relations of Spain with ASEAN countries are at a very low level. Oh, I think okay. that I Thailand see. represents 0.2% mm -hmm. of okay. our providers, of our suppliers. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Uh, we import from Thailand mainly mm. vehicles and uh, fish products. Like you know, seafood? Seafood. I see. And we export machinery mm -hmm. and also vehicles. Ah, vehicles, I see. Uh, we are trying mm -hmm. Recently, in uh, January last year, we mm. created the Spanish Thai Chamber of Commerce ah, because I, I have seen mm. a growing interest mm. of Spanish companies to come to Thailand and to open a, an office uh, here. I see. It's a pity that last year, you know, because oh, of the COVID, yeah. all the uh, promotion activities mm. we had were closed. Oh, I see. And mm. Maybe try again yeah. this year or after the regulation has um, yeah, allowed. And speaking on like future trends, how do you foresee the future trends in the next 10 years between Spain and Thailand or even Spain and ASEAN? Um, what sector should Thailand investors keep an eye on? Oof, the world is changing so much that <laughs> so fast this too. is a very difficult question. Mm -hmm. On one side, I think that because of COVID, there will be many opportunities mm -hmm. in the Spanish property market. I see. Also, I have noticed there are possi interesting possibilities of cooperation mm. in the tourism industries. I you see. know that the minor group from Thailand mm. bought two years ago 
in H Hotels, a Spanish company, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. and yeah. they want to use uh, data purchase mm. to promote an H uh, brand mm. here in Asia. I see. Uh, mm. Other fields I have seen in life science, mm -hmm. we can establish a very good cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a traditional cooperation between our armed forces, I see. defense forces. industries, and other fields for cooperation. Mm. And another also, as in like clothing as well, you know, yeah, like, clothing. like Sara is everywhere. <laughs> Moving on to the next subject, um, if you do have other additions to, to share on economy between Spain and Thailand. Well, yeah. Yeah. maybe this is not only economic yeah. but also cultural. Mm. Something that I have tried to promote since mm. my arrival has been an image of Spain. I have discovered that mm. Thai people feels a lot of sympathy for Spain, mm. but they have no clear idea about what Spain means. <laughs> I think that the same happens uh -huh. in Spain. People know about Thailand, like a very beautiful country, mm. very good for tourism, mm. but the, um, Thai massage are also very international, <laughs> yeah. but they know little, little else. And it's something that I have been trying, mm. making an effort mm. on my side, but also, mm trying to work together with the Thai embassy in Madrid. I see, I see. Tying in perfectly our next questions on tourism, like Thailand, Spain is really big in tourism, not just the main city like um, Madrid, Barcelona and so on. You have um, Sevilla, yes. did I pronounce it correctly? Yeah, Sevilla, Sevilla. Sevilla, Granada. So people all over the world have been visited these cities in Spain. Maybe you can share um, well, even though it, there's COVID at this time, um, maybe you can suggest places in Spain for the audience in planning for future travels. If you want culture, mm. there are so many, uh, so much culture in Spain. Mm. You have uh, close to Madrid, for instance, Avila, Segovia, El Escorial, Toledo. Mm. And you have in uh, Barcelona, mm. you have Barcelona, which has a very beautiful middle, uh, Car Cartier from the Middle Ages, yes. the Barrio Gotico. Mm -hmm. You have Granada, Sevilla, Cordoba, mm. where you can see the remains of the palace, that, the, yeah. the palace of mm -hmm. the Arabs, that uh, yeah. the Arabs left their gastronomy. Also, we are very strong oh, in gastronomy. Yes. You have Galicia, where Galicia. especially mm. seafood and fish in Galicia mm. is uh, wonderful. Mm. In paella, you have the best paellas mm. in Spain. Mm -hmm. In Andalusia, you have the tapas. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, and, and also wine. Yes. Like all, all the regions. All over Spain, all you have Spain. wine. Mm -hmm. And if you want fiesta, mm. Madrid, I am from Madrid, and to me, Madrid has a, the, best. A, a, the best balance <laughs> between fiesta, working, and culture. I we see. have uh, the main painting museum mm. in the world, El mm. Prado. Mm. Um, it's uh, when we speak about the economy of knowledge, mm. we have already it in Madrid. I see, I see. So there's a lot. And in addition to Madrid, also another well-known city is, of course, Barcelona. One of the questions I receive a lot from yes. Twitter is, one of the most famous church in Spain is Sagrada Familia yes. by the artist um, Antoni Gaudi. Yes. So, question that everyone in the world is asking is, when will it be completed? <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. Yeah. When I compare yeah. how it was when I was a child to yeah. now, they have advanced a lot. A lot, right? Okay. And okay. I think that I wouldn't mind if uh -huh. they never complete it. Mm. It's when, art, right? So. Yeah, yeah, and when I was in Bolivia, mm. they liked to leave the houses a little bit unfinished because uh. they had the idea that when you finish your house, yes. you die. Oh, okay. So now the houses keep living on yes. for the next century and so on. On culture of yeah. Spain. So culture of Spain can be described and shared through arts, through music, through even sports. Um, so in this topic, feel free to share to our audience your favorite um, Spanish artists, um, authors, or athletes, and so on. Um, our audience probably know, you know, from art, arts, it is like Picasso, um, Gaudi, 
Salvador Dali and all, and then athletes. Uh, my brother is a very big tennis fan, so of yeah. course Rafael Nadal, and also a big um, F1 um, uh, racing car from yes. so Fernando, Fernando Alonso. Alonso. Yes. <laughs> so yes, feel free to share to our audience. Um, maybe you can separate in each category first. Uh, with start with the artist, maybe one of your favorites or yeah. yeah. Well, for me, uh, my favorite artists mm -hmm. are Goya and Velázquez. Goya is from the 19th century mm -hmm. and Velázquez from the 17th. Mm -hmm. And what are their masterpieces? And well, uh, mm -hmm. for Goya, mm -hmm. he has two beautiful uh, paintings, which is the lady mm -hmm. dressed and undressed. In the same painting? In the, no, in two oh, different oh, two paintings. Different things. I see. It's the same lady. a lady who is lying down. Uh -huh. In one of the paintings, yeah. she's uh, dressed okay. with a very Moorish uh, dress, very beautiful. Uh, long, long dress. And uh -huh. in the other, she has the same uh, position, but mm. she's completely naked. Oh, but it's the same lady. From okay. Yes. Apart from artists, also on music, um, my favorite one so far is um, Resistiré. Especially the 2020 version, which um, the Spanish use it as the COVID anthem, where you play it every day in the evening about 8 p.m. and so on. So yes. it's a mix of um, many Spa famous Spanish artists singing in the song. So check it out; it's it's very really a fun song. But um, originally, it was in the 60s that yes. you mentioned that you mentioned um, by the group called Duo Dinamico. Duo Dinamico. Also, uh, when I was young, I liked very much a group called Siniestro Total. They practice a kind of very funny uh, rock. Rock? Ah, I see. Uh -huh. And of... Is rock big in Spain? Yes. Yeah? Well, I think that rock is big, but also we have pop. I see. Because on rock, my friend's favorite group, one that I listened was Extreme Moduro. Ah, yes. Yeah, Extreme Moduro, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, recently, I think it was two years ago, mm. they uh, se they separated. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay, I didn't and know. I that. remember my daughter was shocked, and uh -huh. we passed one night mm. checking in YouTube songs by Extremo Duro. I had uh -huh. a CD ROM. Oh. We played it. Yeah, let's move on to. TV shows. Get you know, out. Yeah. normally I don't watch uh, much uh, TV, mm -hmm. but there is a series that has been on the screens mm -hmm. maybe for 20 years. It's called Cuéntame. Cuéntame is the story of a family. Mm. They started in, I think, supposedly in around 1965, mm. and this uh, season they had a reach 2020. Ah, I see. Wow. Yeah. How old is the? <laughs> is yeah. the it's, it's the same cast. Yeah, it's the oh, same cast. What? Okay. And oh. to me. <laughs> It's very mm. nice to see mm. things from my childhood. If I can, because I haven't told my favorite writers. Oh yes, please, a writer please, please. That the sad thing is that to enjoy him, mm. I think really you need to read in Spanish, mm. is Jaime Gil de Viedma. He's a poet of the second part of the 20th century. I see. And I really like him. I see. What is the story about or the 
poets usually the the theme of the poem? Um, he speaks a lot about human relations, mm. about lo and about love. Yes, of course, poem and love comes yeah. comes together all the time. Yeah, and that is all up for on the culture section. Um, wrapping up this section, if there is events by the embassy or um, for this year 2021, um, virtual or online events for the audience to participate, maybe you can take this time to share. Well, uh, we want to make in the second half of the year mm -hmm. a film festival of movies by Almodovar. Mm. We think that Almodovar, is, he has now how to describe how Spanish society has evolved, the modern Spanish society also. Almodovar has a side we love especially. It's, he's very inclusive. I see. Uh, he started uh, producing movies about LGBT ah, before okay. anybody else. I see. And also he's very perceptive in the way he, he treats women in mm. his movies. I see. And also uh, with the Spanish speaking countries, mm -hmm. we have a LGBT film festival. I see, I see. Yeah, and that's a wrap for Q&A session. And stay tuned on the ep next episode of Meet the Ambassadors on next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.